Okay, and uh, so we can start uh, with the first uh, class of this course, of the new course uh, of uh, Web Applications uh, uh, 1. Uh, you see that this uh, intro slide, introduction slide is, uh, um, uh, sorry, change the pen to the PowerPoint one. Okay, uh, it's the same uh, slide for the uh, Italian course and for the English course. So that's uh, why we are uh, keeping our the content of the three courses, of so the two instances of the Italian courses and the English one. Uh, very uh, well aligned. So every week uh, we will have the same topics, uh, you will have the, the same labs, uh, uh, we will uh, uh, organize the same uh, exams and so on. So there will be really three courses in parallel with the same topics and same uh, course material and so on. Um, of course, here we have we are in the in the English one and I am the teacher, uh, Fulvio Corner. So I, I introduce myself and uh, during the labs, uh, I will have the help uh, of uh, three uh, uh, co-workers. One is Luca Manella, the second one is Alberto Monge, and the third one is uh, Juan Sainz, uh, who are going to uh, help us in the different uh, labs uh, of the course and also online uh, in the different questions or discussions uh, over, uh, over Slack. Uh, what do you want to do in this course? Uh, well, uh, the, the title pretty much gives it all uh, away. Um, it's about uh, web applications. So we want to understand uh, the, uh, the general architecture of a web application and uh, try to uh, learn how to approach the, the design and the development of these kind of applications, of some specific kinds of applications, because there are many different possible uh, solutions. In particular, um, uh, we would work uh, on what uh, um, you know uh, goes around the JavaScript e e ecosystem. So uh, JavaScript is becoming a more and more important language every year uh, because it's uh, used uh, totally in the front end of any web applications and also in some kind of backends and some kind of IoT systems. Uh, and so we want to approach not just uh, web development uh, but uh, JavaScript. Uh, as a language and the JavaScript used in web development. Uh, and in particular, we learn uh, the basics of the language and how it's used in the server side and in the client side. And in particular, uh, we'll go deeper into more detail uh, about one possible JavaScript framework, uh, which is the uh, very famous uh, React framework uh, that was uh, developed and popularized by, by, by Facebook uh, several years ago. Um, this is not uh, the same as saying uh, we are going to make a course on React. The course is ba on basic uh, web foundations on the front end uh, development uh, and the JavaScript language. Uh, you could do everything with just basic JavaScript, but it becomes easier to use a framework uh, to make your life easier. So we will pick one of this framework, one of the most popular ones, uh, and there will be the, the, the second half of, of the course, basically, will teach about, will uh, deal uh, with the React framework. Um, but uh, I hope we will, be able, we will be able to understand how the framework works, uh, um, because we will have spent a, a, a significant amount of time on the basics of the JavaScript language and libraries. The focus of this course is on the front end of the web application. Of course, JavaScript uh, is mainly used in the front end inside the browser, <clears throat> which is just one piece of the puzzle of a, of a um, complete web application. And this is because uh, we have planned uh, the whole uh, uh, topic of web applications in the different courses in the degree of computer engineering uh, with different modules, okay? So we are here now in the web applications uh, course uh, where you see the, the marker. And uh, uh, we have these three courses right now that we are starting today. This morning we started the Italian courses and now we are starting the English one. And you see that uh, we are talking about uh, browsers and front-end programming basically, hmm, mainly. Uh, then we have a course of web applications two that is given uh, by Professor Malnati and usually one of the optional courses of the elective courses in the in the second year, uh, with deals with the with the with the other half uh, of, of the picture, which which is the the backend uh, programming, uh, so programming on the backend. Of course, uh, 
uh, a web application doesn't exist uh, if you don't have both a front end and the back end. And so we will be forced uh, also to see something about the back end in this course. But we'll try to keep that to a minimum workable uh, just to uh, support our the development of, of our application. Uh, and so we'll, we'll make uh, very minimal choices uh, with respect to the backend technologies. And because we know that there's a, the second course for whoever is interested uh, to take about uh, the backend programming. In between them, so between the applications, web application one and two, we have this course of uh, distributed systems programming, which is more general and it, gives, it lays the foundations for distributed programming. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see towards the end of our course uh, of the application, web applications one, that uh, there, were, there are some problems uh, that we, are, we will not be able to solve, okay? We realize that maybe when we have different users on the same website and they are modifying the same data at the same time, we don't know how to deal with that. And we, don't, we won't learn it in this course because that's not, a, a, say, a, an application problem, it's a distributed synchronization problem from that point of view. And uh, it, those kind of problems uh, cannot be solved uh, by hand or in, with ingenuity or with the first idea that you have in mind. There's a, a lot of understanding how to make synchronization work, how to make a finalization work and so on in a distributed system. And that's why all these topics are dealt in more detail in this other course, which is a, a course inserted in the, in the computer network uh, um, stream of the computer engineering and uh, also is optional for, for all the other um, um, curricula, basically. And it is a conceptual also foundation for the web application two course okay so that we have this arrow that says uh, you we will understand better web application two if you have some big, strong background in distributed system programming this the these three blocks are the main uh, chain uh, for understanding everything related uh, to web applications today and they are also in a way linked uh, with uh, uh, two other courses uh, one is uh, it's, it's not a self promotion well, not really uh, human computer interaction is another course that uh, i'm dealing with uh, uh, luigi de russi which is also a teacher of application web uh, application web one, uno and uh, uh, where we'll have a look uh, at the from the user point of view at, at the design of the interface okay in this course we are trying to design the interfaces from the technical point of view make them work Okay, um, but in some cases, the website that we come up uh, tend to be somewhat ugly or too technical for the normal people. And uh, this is the problem that we is, will be investigated in the human computer interaction course for the people who are interested in this topic. Um, how to design in such, in such a way that an application is usable and uh, uh, easy to use and um, minimizes the errors uh, from the uh, user and uh, maximizes the understanding of what's happening. Another related course uh, is, of course, the mobile application development, uh, which you see here. It's again by Professor Malnati and uh, um, is related in a way that uh, in two ways. One, uh, because, <coughs> sorry, mobile applications also have a, a back end to connect with in most of the cases. And the technology for the backend of mobile applications is basically the same as the technology for the backend of uh, web applications. So the, um, the web applications too will also teach you something that can be extended into mobile applications. And uh, uh, it happens that several frameworks uh, uh, for developing web applications uh, are also aligned with a version that works for mobile. For example, we are studying React and on the mobile world where there is a a, um, a version called uh, mobile uh, react mobile sorry uh, where you use the same criteria the same ideas uh, uh, in the mobile world instead of, of the web world so actually there are a lot in, in parallel mm -hmm. so this is a full package of uh, five courses so you will probably not be able to take all of them depending on your curriculum because the choices that you have are limited but this is the, the big picture that we designed you know, when we started to plan this uh, uh, new course content set that started uh, uh, actually uh, last year. Hmm? 
Okay, so, um, so next year when you're going to, to uh, update your, your career, you can go back to this picture and trying to understand uh, what you like better uh, to follow up. Uh, going back inside into our sandbox, our course, uh, what we are going to learn uh, is basically uh, across four main pillars, four main dimensions. Uh, <clears throat> The first one, of course, is the foundation, JavaScript as a language. Uh, JavaScript is a rich language, is a modern language, is a strange language also because it has very strange roots. And uh, uh, some people hate it, some people like it, uh, and most of the people just swing between the two extremes. Um, but uh, we want to learn it uh, independently from the application in, in, the, in the web. Okay, we, we won't start from the browser. We start from the language, okay? The first two weeks, basically, we'll devote them to understanding the language, the foundations, the object model, and so on. Uh, and the particular characteristics, uh, and we'll see that uh, uh, there are the, a specific way of dealing with function, dealing with objects, uh, we're dealing with arrays uh, um, that makes uh, programming JavaScript quite different from programming in, in other languages. Uh, and that will be used a lot during the React development. So first we, we learn the language and then we see how this language is injected into the browser. So JavaScript runs into a browser, so we'll understand how the browser is structured inside. Okay, it's a, it's an, a rich environment in which your code, our code is working and especially uh, all the uh, manipulation of the web page through the document object model to the DOM and uh, we learn also a bit of HTML and CSS just for, for creating, styling up the pages. Okay, we won't make a course on web design, of course, but the minimum amount uh, of, of, of web, web uh, uh, construction or creation hmm, to understand, especially the interactive parts related with forms, validation, and so on. And uh, uh, this will lead us. Uh, to uh, being able to create, uh, so you, you, if you couple the, the JavaScript language and the browser, what you get is the possibility of creating an application, an entire application inside one web page, what is called the single page applications. A web page that contains the, uh, the source code, the JavaScript code for creating all the elements in the interface and for running them. Hmm? Um, single page application run JavaScript on the, on the, on the client side, but also have some backend where to persist or store the data. And uh, uh, so we will learn also a bit of uh, uh, how to implement the API or the backend, a very little backend uh, where it, the, our applications can interact and can store the data, can access some functionality. Uh, at that point, we'll, we'll be able to create a, you know, a, a real application inside the browser that talks to a to a simple backend server. Then also the backend will be developed in JavaScript in this case using the Node um, interpreter. And finally, uh, the React framework. So with all this knowledge, we will uh, see how to, and actually the picture is not up to scale because this will take uh, more than 50% of the course basically of the time and the exam will be the main focus of the exam. Uh, but, uh, uh, okay, so you imagine it much uh, wider than the other uh, three, three pictures, three blocks um, in this picture. And uh, so we learn uh, how to develop uh, in this uh, React framework, uh, um, and we'll see that it will be much, much faster, of course, uh, than developing in basic uh, JavaScript by hand. Okay, so a lot of problems uh, that could raise uh, if you wanted to write your application by hand using just the JavaScript language, uh, we probably won't see, won't uh, study them or won't find a solution for them because we know that the framework already has a solution. But at least we need to understand the problem, okay? To understand why there are some choices uh, in, the, in the framework that we are using, okay? Uh, this is quite different from a person that just uh, learns to use, how to use React because they will do a lot of cut and paste without understanding what is happening here. Of course, we want to have uh, computer engineers, uh, engineers that first uh, do understand what is happening behind the, uh, um, the doors, uh, the closed doors of, of the framework, 
and the second uh, uh, reactor uh, any given framework is not going to last forever okay uh, react uh, has a very huge popularity but uh, maybe three or four years ago it would have been angular as a top uh, uh, say uh, framework and the election one for new application i don't know in two or three or four years uh, which will be the uh, the dominant framework but i really hope that every or each one of you will be able to learn and adapt very quickly because we actually try to understand what's happening really uh, in the browser and uh, in the language and these two things are not going to go away okay um at this point uh, there's one thing I, I i didn't say up to now is that i really appreciate uh, the interaction during during my lecture so that uh, don't feel me like i'm talking to a wall uh, or to a grid of black boxes and so if you want to have questions have comments uh, uh, you can use the chat it's there we use the very you know, powerful chat system just to encourage you to write to interact also you can chat with each other and uh, um, uh, and also if you want also to speak uh, of course uh, you're free to do that mm -hmm. uh, so i will try to have uh, one eye on you and on the slide and the left eye okay, back in the corner i have the second screen when i can read the chat so if you see me uh, looking sideways you know that i'm reading to what you're writing and so on uh, Andrew is asking, what is the React framework? It's a um, JavaScript library that uh, enables you to create, uh, of course, single page applications uh, with a lot of you know, already embedded functionality and very easy and rich to extend. But basically, it's, it's a JavaScript library. You may have learned uh, you know, the very famous uh, jQuery library, which uh, was uh, you know, a really cornerstone for changing how people work with JavaScript uh, 10 years ago and uh, right now we have uh, uh, you know, this new this new trend of frameworks so a set of libraries and runtime environments basically that help uh, that know understand and know what are the main problems in the development of single on web applications and they already give you some solutions or suggested solutions for those hmm? Um, and so if you have a look at the the you know, the skills that people that companies are asking when you are they are hiring people you will see this kind of frameworks uh, very much okay uh, so uh, i asked for interactivity uh, and uh, uh, let's maybe we can spend five minutes uh, uh, to um, uh, to to know each other a bit uh, Damian is asking what kind of application we are going to code. Um, basically, um, uh, we are not going to develop the highly dynamic applications or real-time applications because that would be too far. We are we only have six credits, and you will uh, you will feel that uh, uh, a lot of material is already stressed into six six credits. So basically, there will be. Uh, you know, form-based uh, applications uh, for you know, sending data, filtering, sorting, uh, and so on. Uh, uh, so it could be a, a social network, could be a, you know, e-commerce, uh, th those kind of applications where you have uh, data lists, uh, uh, data to input uh, lists uh, to filter, sort, and validate, and so on and uh, we will not go into high, uh, highly dynamic or, or animations or video games uh, or something like that that would be that extra extra skills that we don't have time to go into um, for lorenzo the difference between a framework and a library library can be anything can be just a library for i don't know managing the dates the formats or the internationalization of date formats a framework is basically one library or, or a set of coordinated libraries that give you a way of uh, programming your system so not just functions that you can use uh, but uh, a main module that uh, calls your application so you develop your application according to the principles of the framework okay but let's not go into philosophy okay today uh, we will uh, we'll go step by step and uh, no i mean uh, you know that here in um, in zoom you have a possibility for, of annotating 
so if you go to annotate i would like maybe to just to have an idea of uh, where we are okay uh, uh, around the world so i will uh, you should be enabled to do that i will put uh, a small stamp where i am right now which is more or less like here and uh, if you want to put a stamp or a sign or a, or a dot or whatever where you are uh, now so we can have an idea hmm? at least we don't see it each other but we can imagine each other standing or sitting uh, somewhere and we have the three levels maybe it's also a surprise for you because uh, we are most of you are the first years they don't know each other of course it's just a qualitative exercise we don't we are not taking statistics i'm not saving this data so we don't have uh, hard numbers Okay, so okay, so I think it there's no clear trend. Okay, people are basically around everywhere. There's not a domination of people coming from Turin. Uh, so we have a, we'll have a, a, an interesting, a probably strong uh, uh, online presence. Okay, so I move to the case. I move to the next question. Okay, there's some somebody who's in the in the white zone of Sardinia. Good for them. And uh, uh, okay, let me move to the second screen. So let me clear this and move to the second screen. So I think uh, this slide is a consequence of the previous one. So can you position yourself uh, more left, more to the left or more to the right, according to how you are planning to attend? Hmm, it's a nice split more so it looks like 50 50 with a maybe a 10 or 15 percent of people which are still undecided okay i don't see many artists in this course you are as bad as me as at the drawing I'm, I'm at least I'm not alone in that. Okay, so let's go on to the next question. I, sorry, I lost the toolbar. Uh, go away. Okay uh what did you do in the bachelor just to understand whether we have an, a shared background okay there's some brave people who did the switch and all the computer engineers that are balling the others Oh, data science, I forgot to put it. No, data science is not, oh, okay, maybe you did it uh, in, uh, outside Polytechnic because here in Polytechnic, you only have data science at the, <clears throat> at the master level. Hmm? Uh, 
Okay. Thank you for the information. Hmm. So we have a bit of uh, uh, people coming from different degrees, but the most uh, most of them are from computer engineering. At least uh, uh, nobody's ashamed of, the, of what they did in the past, uh, and it's good for you. And uh, I think uh, my last question, so that we can end this game, is uh, uh, about your background. Uh, so if you position yourself uh, in the four uh, topics, more to the left or more to the right, uh, where would you go? Totally random, I see. Okay, nobody's a master. Somebody tries to smile. Mm, I see a, a group of people already know some of React, which is good. So it will be easier for you. And uh, there's a very random knowledge uh, of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Uh, uh, according to the signs uh, that of course uh, are not reliable at all okay so if you're doing some data science course imagine the reliability of this data here if i had to to take some some decisions or not okay so this was a little game just to break the ice and uh, force you to interact in some way because you are very usually uh, relentant in the, in trying to um, to interact so that at least uh, we have some a uh, little bit of information about each other okay so let's clear all of this because it will be persistent and uh, let's move on okay let's go uh, on to more boring uh, information about the course organization um this is a first preview about uh, the calendars and uh, of the um, of the course so how we are uh, planning to spend the different weeks so the first two weeks uh, more or less will be introduction to javascript and to node.js as an interpreter then we'll move uh, uh, for a couple of weeks uh, into the browser so first the language and the node interpreter week one and two then the browser uh, and the programming in the browser weeks uh, four and five and uh, uh, is, and from week uh, five to ten basically we'll uh, go into the development of applications with the, with react okay so the first uh, four or five weeks uh, are the background and the rest are the actual development of the applications you see that the weeks here number up to 11 we are 14 um, weeks uh, really in in the course uh, this is because in the last weeks uh, uh, we'll have we'll spend the time for doing exercises for preparing for the exam and we'll want to push a new uh, topics in the last weeks of the course okay so we'll try to finish the main topic so that we have time uh, to prepare for the exam and to start uh, also developing the exam project about the organization um, this is the schedule uh, that will be for the whole semester except the first two weeks uh, in general we have uh, the classes on on thursday morning here and they are all online all the classes will be like this one with zoom uh, and we, they will always be at the same link so once you save the link once you don't need to get the link every time a new lecture starts the same link every time you don't need to go to go to the, through the Portal didactic or whatever, just use this link to, to enter the class every Thursday morning. And uh, uh, for the first two weeks, uh, uh, also we have this uh, Monday afternoon, uh, three hours from 2.30 to 5.30. Um, of course, these uh, three plus three hours that we are doing now will be uh, subtracted from the last week. So in the last week, we will have less hours. Okay, so we will have less lectures so that you can work uh, uh, on the exam or on other topics that where, where the teacher will be late and uh, we are trying to to um, to play in advance uh, for the rest of the semester the monday afternoon will be devoted to 
uh, to the labs. We have a uh, one hour and a half uh, uh, per week of labs. And uh, uh, the course is organized in three groups. One group is, on, is uh, uh, at Politecnico, and we will be able to work inside the laboratory Labinf that um, many of you or everybody coming from computer engineering already know that, uh, but it's inside the Department of, uh, of um, Computer Science. We'll give you more than precise information how to enter uh, into that part of the Politecnico with these conditions uh, later. Um, because the, the labs will be starting on the next, uh, on the third week. So the first two weeks, uh, uh, there will be no lab. Uh, actually, we only be working you know, just during the exercises in class. And uh, uh, two uh, groups uh, will be online. Mm -hmm. The three groups will do all the same exercise. They will have an exercise uh, for to program in, in JavaScript, basically. And uh, um, the, the two online groups uh, will be done again on Zoom. Uh, and uh, uh, the presence group, the group in presence, of course, will be in the lab. Uh, there will be, will be no recording hmm, of the labs because basically it's you who are working, so there's no nothing to record. Basically, we are not explaining anything new. And uh, um, during the the, the lab inf uh, hours, uh, there will be no uh, online presence. Okay, so you cannot attend uh, the lab inf. Uh, from this hour here, uh, if you are online, we are not, we are not opening the, the Zoom call in this hour, only on the online hours and so on. The topic is the same, so you can choose whichever fits you better. Just remember that for going in presence, you need to uh, to book your presence with the reservations on the app uh, or on the on the portal. Uh, if you reserve a place on the lab. We will monitor, we'll keep an eye on how many people are connecting to the different slots and try to adjust according to the development of the course uh, to, to try to maximize you know, the, the support we may give to you during this, uh, these labs. Mm -hmm. um, okay, um, so for the classes, uh, I think we, we already know everything. Uh, the link for Zoom and the fact that we are chatting on Slack instead of the Zoom chat channel. And uh, uh, the labs basically will publish uh, some days in advance uh, the text of the lab. So probably will be on, on Thursday or Friday in the week before. We publish a text that we will have, you will have to work on uh, during the lab hour on Monday. Or maybe if you want to start even earlier, of course, you, you may. And uh, the week, one week later, we will also be uh, posting the solution, one possible solution, of course, because there's only there's not one solution uh, at all. Um, why the, the lectures? Uh, uh, okay, they are online. They will be posted online on uh, on, on YouTube, uh, and you already have the link for the playlist. And we are also will post them onto the portal, the didactica, so you can follow them from the app. Um, so you can follow them basically when you want, even, even outside this time. Of course, the labs, uh, it's uh, for, for those of you who have maybe other courses or different time zone, uh, at least try try to attend the labs uh, during the right hours, uh, because there, there will be people who give you support. Okay. In the other times, of course, we will always be um, say giving support on Slack, uh, but uh, in during the lab hours uh, will be uh, more, and you, I will tell you how we organize them. Uh, then. So all the course can be taken online. Uh, most of the content can also be done asynchronously, and uh, um, and the um, uh, but the labs are the only synchronous component. So if you have to invest or to organize your schedule, try to invest on the labs. Uh, the lecture will be immediately uploaded. Uh, yes, usually within uh, one hour uh, after the end of the lecture, they will be online. Just the time uh, for Zoom to re-encode that and also YouTube to do the encoding. But immediately after the end of the, of the lecture, I will start uh, uh, publishing them. Mm -hmm. um, OK, uh, during the labs, um, we have uh, uh, this year we are trying a new organization of the labs uh, trying to help you uh, keeping the pace with the course basically mm -hmm. so we noticed last year that some, uh, some people lost the pace and uh, 
uh, they went uh, behind uh, schedule and uh, uh, at the end they had difficulty because they had to study all, uh, all the topics and so we are trying to give some incentive for attending reality the labs um, basically we have uh, every week one lab and the first three one three ones will be so in week number three four and five there will be simple labs an exercise that you have to do just to learn for yourself okay but after that, we'll have two so-called big labs. And one big lab will be an exercise that will span over four weeks. Okay, so we'll have one big lab or four weeks and every week we'll, gi we'll give you an exercise, which is long. And every week you have to do one step of this exercise that uh, um, adds the technologies or the topics that have been explained in that week. So it's sort of a four different exercises, each aligned on the topic of that week, but they are concatenated in some way. And at the end, they make one big exercise. Uh, and this will be done twice. Huh? Uh, once at starting at, at the four um, weeks, uh, uh, three, four, five, five six, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, and the other from nine to 12, basically. Um, these two big labs you may do them by yourself but you may also uh, submit them as a group so you can also create a group um, of uh, of uh, four people ideally four people or in some cases also three is acceptable <clears throat> and you can work together uh, to submit and finish and submit these big labs and uh, they will give you one point uh, each uh, for the exam so in total you may have two more points of course you are not doing that for the for the points because two points is not uh, you know uh, such a huge amount but it's a way of uh, giving you some motivation and uh, uh, the idea is just uh, is also that during the lab so that can, you can work together in your group uh, and uh, uh, so, so knowing that you have somebody to work with uh, helps you also to work and connect and to keep the pace uh, Alessandro is asking that if the groups uh, can cross the letter boundaries, uh, I would say yes. I would also say that these uh, boundaries, uh, AK, LZ, are not strict, okay? Uh, also because you have maybe other other courses that are, that are overlapping, so we'll try to be flexible. Of course, we cannot be flexible with online or in presence, but between the two online courses, uh, uh, the two online, sorry, um, turns or groups, uh, you can move. Uh, we are not, unless everybody goes to one and the other gets empty, that would be a problem because there would be a problem for us to support you. But you, you, mm -hmm. we, this is a suggestion, we tend to be flexible if uh, the numbers are, uh, are balanced. That's why I was saying before, we'll try to keep an eye on the attendance uh, and try to make some adjustments uh, during the course if we need them, right? Um, Claudio, regarding leg groups for people who are not officially enrolled yet, should they use their current ideas in institutional email? Another idea will change in enrollment. This is a problem. I, we, I, I didn't, I didn't think I asked for an ID in any case. Okay, um, so um, the 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 official IDs are just needed for the exam. Uh, all the rest of the course uh, uh, is not uh, is not required that you already have uh, the, the matricula number, the ID number, the, the, the final one. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, uh, the, the submission of the groups will be done on GitHub and then you just give me the, your uh, GitHub ID and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not, it, it's not a problem in this case. Um, yes, in the lab groups you have to submit the ID, but it's just an information for us. So that would be handled later on when we when we register the score maybe we see that this number is wrong and we'll check the, the new one so uh, um, i follow the previous year can i still be a part of a group yes of course the course is fresh from start every year so you are um, welcome also to if you want to reattend the course to follow, follow the course uh, you can be part of the group uh, everybody who is in the in the roster, of course, uh, can can be part of that. Uh, pairing with someone from the Italian version of the course is more difficult because then we have to register the scores into different. I, we we didn't sort that out yet. 
I, I, I'm not able to tell you yes, uh, right now we have to discuss whether it's feasible or it makes things more complex to, to track uh, people that are, you, uh, people working in a group are also supposed to be attending the same groups. Okay, and the, the, but the group for the Italian courses are uh, in, uh, in different hours from ours. Uh, so uh, I, I don't see how, how this can work uh, well, but mm, we'll see. Mm. Um, it's not a it's not a no, but it's not a yet uh, at, at least hmm? uh, for the moment. Okay, uh, so this is the idea. Hmm? Uh, we have this uh, Google form that you can uh, click, uh, and if you have a suggestion of a, of a group, uh, and it possibly try to fill that before the first lab. So we have two uh, two full weeks of time, and um, create your group, uh, and so that at the the first labs, uh, you already know who we are going to work with. And how is that working? Of course, if you are in the in Labinf, uh, you will sit together or, or close to each other, but not too close, please. And um, if you are online, uh, we will create uh, uh, many rooms uh, uh, in the, in the, in the, um, the Zoom call. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will open a Zoom call and create many rooms, and every group can go inside one room. What happens there is that the four people, the four students that are inside the room are on their own. So they're free to speak and they're free to, to chat, they're free to share the screen or, or uh, and with, without uh, you know, in, mm, uh, making noise for other people or, or without being heard by the, by the teacher. So it's a more informal setting. Like when you're maybe you are doing a, a call with your friends uh, but the call is inside uh, inside the lab. Mm -hmm. You're a group and you're free to discuss very freely inside the, inside this group uh, and organize it how you want. And if you want to ask uh, a question, you just um, ask the teacher to come into the room uh, or maybe the teacher will go around Robin just to ask uh, whether anything everything is okay. Um, uh, but for most, so you can work freely uh, among yourself. So, uh, I, I, we found we, we tested this modality in another course. We found it was working well because at least you are not alone. And you, you, if you are asking or say, telling something to, to a friend, you are already there connected. You don't need to have another connection to your friends and one with the teacher and so on. That would be complex. Um, this modality is for all the labs, not just for the big ones. So uh, you know, every Monday we'll open Zoom and open the rooms. So you can enter one room, you can choose your own room and go inside and start working. F find a free room and go inside uh, every Monday hmm, during the, the online labs. So uh, you can start even, of course, if the first labs, which are not the big ones, uh, they, don't need, they don't need to be submitted. Uh, you are not really required to go into groups, but we suggest to do that so that you can you know, start uh, working together, know each other uh, better. Is this participation mandatory? No, no. Of course, it uh, it isn't. Hmm. Uh, even the, the participation is not mandatory, and also the submission of the labs is not mandatory. If you don't submit, you don't get the point. That's all. Okay. We are not tracking the presence of of, of everybody. Okay. Uh, we 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 already have enough work to do <laughs> rather than keeping track of uh, who is going where and when. Is there a group that are mixed abroad and Turing? Is it possible to go to the Labinf? Uh, yes, it is possible, but then you are on your own with the call. So you can go to the Labinf, maybe two people in Labinf, and then open a connection on your smartphone with your friends which are abroad. Uh, you can do that. Yes. Uh, depends on you, how you feel, uh, whether it's useful or not. Uh, but there are no constraints about that. Hmm. Okay, and there will be, of course, probably 10,000 different uh, uh, special cases that we haven't thought of, but uh, we are just trying all of this together. So that, let's try to, to create this uh, environment and to make it better through, through the progressing of the course. Um, okay, but we'll, we'll uh, tell more when we are closer to, to the starting of the lab. Um, okay, the learning material, you already know that everybody is on this website, which is not in the portal of the didactica, so that I don't have to enable each and every single person 
that is still not enrolled and it's a very mm, annoying uh, work to do and so i put everything into a website where ev everybody can access the material there's not there's no secrets there uh, you have all the slides uh, and the schedule i think that the important part the most important page is the schedule one let me just pull up a web browser in this screen okay so this is the web course web page where this some dull information and then we have the schedule and you see that uh, for we are trying also to plan ahead a bit so tell you what will happen in the next classes when when we know it we'll write it and so you can also plan your work or maybe can start studying or decide whether to attend or, or to wait for the recording whatever uh, we are putting the slides here uh close to each lecture and after the lecture we are, I, I will publish also a link uh, to, to the um, youtube video where the the lecture is published uh, right after the lecture i said okay so this is the main uh, uh the most important page of this website uh, you see that this uh, we also have a github repository which is called course materials inside this organization where you also have a copy of the slides that are publishing they are the same slides but since you will probably be already familiar with with, with github or in any case we are going to use it a lot i think it's a good idea to clone this repository so that every time you pull you get the new version of the slides and all the newly published material so that instead of going and click and downloading them one by one you can just update your your repository and you have all the new material uh, so there's nothing additional and in the in the organization public or wow wow and whatever uh, we'll also uh, create projects uh, where we share uh, the exercises that we do during the lecture so if during a lecture we do together an exercise uh, at the end of the lecture i will publish here in this uh, github organization the code for uh, for the exercise so that you don't have to be you know uh, copying every space or every comma that they write uh, be so you don't have to care too much about the syntax and writing uh, you can do that on your own and at the end you know that you have uh, the same code that is developed during the lectures uh, immediately downloadable there so the course web page and the github repositories are will be the main spaces you now where we exchange information we have some resources pages uh, where we have the links of, to the tools that we are going to use uh, some links to the documentation and uh, of course the slides that we already have there and the section about the exam uh, that we are we are telling some works uh, some 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 concepts later uh, and we have you have all the information all detailed information here for for later so as i said probably most of the work uh, uh, most of the information uh, will be posted here in real time schedule and also on the on the discussion channel in, in slack uh so you have the links here for youtube and to the github uh, for for the course and of course the other important tool is uh, is our slack and uh, we planned to have uh, three main channels in the slack of the course i'm trying to use Slack instead of the emails instead of the other communication so please uh, don't send me emails about the course uh, and use uh, only slack uh, so that we can have all the communications there uh we have a uh, okay the live lecture channel is the one that we are using during the lectures so when we are doing a lecture i will have this channel open and uh, all in all the rest of the time i have the not notification muted so i'm not going to read the uh, message in that channel uh, and then we have two main channels one is general and the other is discussion general is a private channel or where we only can write only the teachers can write uh, in the um, in the general channel it, this is where we are posting announcements uh, news uh, links to material uh, links to, to the new videos and whatever okay why discussion is a free channel where everybody can write and usually you can ask questions there and we will reply okay so we will read and uh, respond to every message that you write in discussion okay if you write on saturday night uh, maybe we won't respond uh, on sunday morning but uh, we will uh, uh, go get there and respond uh, for sure okay um so this is the main channel where we can have discussions or questions and so on uh, 
outside the lectures so during the whole the whole week there could be questions about uh, the um, the lectures where there can be questions about the labs about uh, the organization of the course whatever just an open channel for discussion anytime uh, plus uh, you can have uh, uh, i didn't write it but uh, you may have uh, private groups you just uh, in these groups you if you want you may create a group so maybe if you have a group of uh, the four people that are going to work uh, on the labs uh, you can create a group uh, on slack and uh, if the group is private nobody can see your messages not even uh, the administrators cannot see them so it's really private we, we cannot see what you write there so it's a way maybe of keeping in contact uh, if you are working together in a group if you want okay so you are allowed to do that it's not a problem uh, for us um okay so it's uh, it's an important tool for for us uh, some words about the exam uh the exam consists in uh, developing developing sorry developing a project uh, so we'll give you an assignment uh, an assignment so the description of a project to be implemented and uh, you have uh, 20 days of time for implementing the project so we'll give you the assignment 20 days before the official date of the exam from that moment you can work on the project when you want you don't have to tell us you don't have to enroll or whatever you can start working and uh, you will submit uh, the day before the exam okay um, the projects are individual so they will be they must be submitted individually of course you can work a bit together but the project will be evaluated separately for each person okay uh, and so but what i saw is that a lot of people want to do their own specific projects and there's a lot of uh, individual projects that are really different projects that are being submitted and the project uh, gives up to 24 points in this in the scale to 30 and it requires a minimum threshold of 12 points so the project should be is the main um, component of the exam and should be at least sufficient then the project since you are doing the project on your own we need to be sure that you did your own project okay it's not that somebody else uh, that did the project instead of you and so we'll have this oral discussion which should not be theoretical question there will not be any other kind of question there will be a discussion on your project so the question will be what did you do in this project uh, why did you make this choice I, how would you change this functionality what uh, do you think uh, this error is due to or something like that on your project hmm? of course we need to have some understanding of what is happening in the project and what is happening in the, in the framework to understand actually uh, what we what the, the content of the discussion this is normal okay so you don't have to study anything more rather than doing well your project this is just a check that you know the project that you submitted and you you were aware of the design choices that you made in your project hmm? And this oral discussion is uh, up to six points uh, maximum, uh, but uh, it can also be minus infinite, let's say, uh, if uh, we discover that you don't know the project that you submitted. Uh, so if uh, in the discussion we uh, realize that you really, you really don't know the project and so you didn't write it, then of course, uh, uh the the exam is uh is not valid okay um so the oral is a confirmation that you did the project and of course an understanding of how deeply you knew about that the project will be discussed in english yes yes because this course uh, is official in english so we may have uh, uh you know all uh, uh, individual discussions also in italian so if you want to ask questions uh, privately for example it's okay for me but the official moments which are the lectures and we are the discussion groups and the exam must be in um, in english how are the oral points will be assigned by me is it enough as a response uh, from zero to six according to how much i feel you you know well the project no but usually i tend to assign uh, 
five to everybody and six to the ones that are very good and maybe four when they see that uh, somebody is not very certain about very sure about uh, some points okay but don't worry that's my part of the work i'm not asking you to to fix the points um there would be no theoretical questions yes that's right hmm? theoretical questions means uh, understanding what you did understanding how how it works uh, so maybe we also go into uh okay why is this in, uh, maybe there's there will be some piece of asynchronous code that is not working and so maybe we try to understand uh, how a promise uh, is in javascript uh, is supposed to be um, uh, rejected for example no, I, some, some javascript jargon that we'll see later on uh, and so of course we need to understand what a promise is and how it works but there is not will not be a uh, not just a theoretical question of uh, no um the uh, mark of the order depends only on your explanation itself or on the quality of the project no they are the two are independent hmm? we have you have a mark about the project which gives uh, which measures how much um, the function the functionality and the quality of the project itself from 12 to 24 and then the oral is just about the knowledge so if, if you have a bad project bad not very good project and you know it well and you reply well during the, the discussion you get the full six points they are independent um, okay is there a specific date not yet not that i'm aware of but it will be 20 days before the official date could you publish the links to labs form later on this on it's on the slides the links is on the slides and the slides are already in the course website so everybody is already on github and is already on the course website mm -hmm. uh, and, and all the links are are there mm -hmm. uh, probably they are also okay uh, i will publish it also on on general in slack uh, because uh, it may be useful for uh, a lot of people okay uh, so we have 24 plus 6 is uh, 30 plus 2 which are the, the two big labs okay so the big labs will be useful to have two points more and if you already have 30 you get uh, the the honors uh, um, uh, in the um, to get the the, the lower day the loud day in the in, in your um, in your in your score okay uh, and the points will be given to all the four people in the group if of course it's submitted and it's being evaluated as uh, as functional as working uh, these are just the main points uh, the all the details of the rules uh, are in the website uh, in the section exam you can read uh, when you are really uh, bored you can read all the all the um, all the procedures or the all the details hmm? uh the deadlines and the preparation will be told during the lectures yes the big labs will be uh, the published uh, with the other labs on the website and they will go into the different weeks probably will give you some one more week uh, to for submitting after the publication of the last piece okay remember the big labs is lasting four weeks uh, so you have the specification on week number one and you can submit uh, after week number four okay uh, but of course we will be very clear about the deadlines uh, nothing will happen from the night to the morning in this course okay um so the but the big part of the exam is of course the project and the project you have to develop a, a web application uh, with a simplified web application according to the specification in the, using the technologies that we, we learned during the course or so react and javascript in the front end uh, node plus express uh, on the back end and sqlite for the uh, persistence uh, we'll build this uh, uh, one piece at a time and we'll give you this functional specification functional means that we are just saying what the website will do and how to realize it uh, how to organize the pages how to organize the content and whatever out what classes to create what components and so on it will be up to you it's part of your design um, and the submission procedure is managed by the this tool called the github classroom where you will be forking an initial version of the project basically an empty version of the project and then you can commit in github and push all your releases until the final one so everything will be on this uh, uh, github classroom so we can see all the projects uh, together 
and uh, as the final part in the, in the in the final push when you actually are submitting your your final version you you have to add a tag of saying okay this is my final version please uh, please check it and uh, we will download your project and test it on, on our computer on a, on a machine on a linux machine uh, or with the node js and so on and uh, we run it test it if there are some bugs or problems or errors or exceptions and uh, have a look at the code no? or the code quality is if it's clear is if it's well organized and so on so we evaluate both from the functional point of view and also from the code point of view uh, there's some questions here um, can you see an example of the project yes you can have a look at the website there are the four projects that we uh, gave the, in the four um, exams last year so they are all still linked we can see uh, all the the real text and uh, um, and you can you can have an idea hmm? so you can read them there uh, are we required to use a Linux distribution like Ubuntu? No, no, you are not required for that. You can develop uh, on, on Mac, on Windows, on Linux, uh, where you want. The only uh, information here is that I am checking, I will be checking the, 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 your version on a Linux uh, virtual machine, basically, on, uh, on Windows uh, with the Windows uh, subsystem for Linux, uh, where I am installed uh, an Ubuntu uh, version. But in 99% of the cases, uh, uh, JavaScript uh, projects don't care about uh, the environment uh, because it's portable. Uh, just be careful with the case uh, uh, of the directories. So, okay, if you have a directory called uh, ABC in capital letters, then uh, and then in in your code you import something like uh, A and BC with lowercase letter, it will work on Windows, it will work on the Mac, but it will fail on uh, on, uh, on Linux. So the, the only big problem is try to be consistent with your capitalization. For the rest, there are no problems of interoperability within the different operating systems. Do we need an account on GitHub with the institution email or the personal account is enough? Uh, um, the, your personal account is, is more than enough. Uh, GitHub Classroom will manage the link between your GitHub account that you're logging with and the classroom roster, so the list of students. So when you download the project from this uh, classroom uh, application, it will, it's, there, it's a link for, it's a guided fork of the project, basically. You enter with this link uh, and you fork a project uh, uh, and the project will be private to you and to the teachers, basically, in a, spe in a special organization. And in that moment, uh, you will tell you, you will tell the system which, who you are in the list of students. So at that point, we will be linking your GitHub um, username with your student ID. And, uh, but so you can use any GitHub username you want uh, during the whole course, even at the exam. You don't need to create an extra one. Uh, the version node and NPM, we are using the last uh, LTS, uh, the uh, 14, mm, node 14, which is the long term version, which is uh, current uh, today. Hmm? Um, Okay, the other discussion, I think we all, I don't think there are any more details to, yeah, it's just uh, telling what we already discussed before. Okay, uh, what is the material for, for studying this course, apart of course from the lectures and the slides and all the material we're trying to create? Um, well, uh, JavaScript uh, basically is very well, very well documented on the Mozilla website, Mozilla Developer Networks, uh, and uh, that has a, a really a lot of details and very good explanations about all the functions in the JavaScript libraries, uh, the consoles in the language, uh, and also the support in the browsers of the different uh, JavaScript constructs. You have very, very powerful, complete, and well-written resource. It's a bit of a problem that they got defunded by the Mozilla Foundation, so they don't, they're not getting uh, so much money as in the past. And I, I'm, I'm afraid for the quality of the results, but right now it's the single resource that is more um, complete and, uh, and clear in the JavaScript world um, as a website. And it's also, of course, available in free. 
and also all the documentation about React, which is coming from the React website itself, uh, where it's published and, and, and all documented and, uh, and freely available. So these are the two key, uh, of course, uh, websites that we'll be uh, consulting uh, uh, a lot. Uh, I also have some links uh, to possible books. Uh, these are by no means the full or the best ones. Uh, they are just the ones that I use to pick some information to, to prepare some lectures from some of them. Okay, so if you want, uh, you may um, you may have uh, uh, this one is was was nice, but it's it's very old. You see the date here, 2011. It's several versions ago. Uh, this should be newer. Uh, I also I didn't check whether it was actually released or not the, the seventh ed edition. So these slides have not been updated since last year. We need to check whether the new version, you know, um, 10 years ago, they, they, started, they succeeded in publishing the new version or not, because this one, uh, I worked on, um, on the pre-release because it has information about the modern JavaScript language. Uh, I also use this, this book from, uh, uh, for, for the full stack, for the React uh, library, but there are many, really, if you're see, uh, searching for resources about JavaScript and React, you will find really uh, tons of them. Uh, maybe I have a short list of a selection of uh, uh, online material, which I found useful, uh, which are a bit more in depth because you find a lot of material, but a lot of material is very low level, okay, very beginner level, or something is very nerdy for a specific detail of a specific framework. Something for understanding the fundamentals is there in between. You are not a beginner anymore, but you are not interested in the details or the nerdy details. You are interested in understanding the mechanisms and the basis. And I found these uh, two sources here. You don't know JavaScript yet. These are a very nice resource uh, with a lot of information. He stopped developing this and updating these uh, books, but they are still very valid. Uh, this is very simple by Flavio Copes, who is an Italian author. Uh, and these are other uh, books from uh, Rush Meyer that published a lot of resources and all these are all free resources online so there, there are online versions of the books there are a couple of chapters chapters that are missing in the online version but are basically uh, quite uh, um, uh, complete and uh, you see the title javascript for the impatient programmer so if you already know programming and you want to learn javascript uh, it will be faster and focusing on what is different uh, and then you can go deeper uh, into into some of those so if you want to have a look at these resources, uh, they may be useful to have them uh, when maybe there are some details that you want to study. Mm, and more, of course, uh, javascript.info is another website that is made of tutorials, actually. Many, many little tutorials. Uh, and this DevDocs uh, is a nice project because it puts together documentation from many different projects. You have together in the same place documentation for the CSS and from the React and from JavaScript and so on, all in the in one search engine that just collects uh, the documentation and the official documentation of the libraries of different projects. But, you know, you find it. If you find something interesting, just uh, share that uh, in Slack uh, so that we can add it to the suggestions. For the development, development for point of view, uh, basically we need a runtime for running our projects uh, and it will be Node. As I mentioned, the version, uh, the, la the latest uh, LTS uh, version, long term uh, support. Um, so at, at this moment, it will be the version 14. Dot something. And um, you can download it here. And if you are on Linux, uh, uh, this is a, a, a place where you can download the package for your own distribution, because it's likely that probably your distribution maybe it doesn't have this, this uh, latest version. If it has an older version here, you find uh, um, the new ones. You can select the version you want. Um, Chocolati, no. If you want to use, or if you already have it to install Node, you can do that, but otherwise you can just install uh, the Node installer on Windows uh, and um, run the Windows installer normally. Uh, the, you will we will install packages using npm directly in the javascript so you, we don't need any external package manager and uh, uh, for the de debugging uh, for the second part of the course mainly uh, when we start react uh, there will be a nice extension also developed by the by facebook by the developer of react uh, which is called the react developer tools uh, which is available for all the major browsers 
um, that will help us uh, to extend the developer console of our browser with React specific uh, tabs, hmm? basically. And for the programming environment, uh, okay, like everybody says, uh, uh, Notepad is enough, uh, but um, probably having something more powerful is better. Uh, I think we can, well, I, I tend to use uh, the Visual Studio Code, which is uh, cross platform and is uh, simple enough uh, and, and powerful enough, as I say, to do the work we, do, we did. Um, the uh, there's an alternative if you want to use also WebStorm or JetBrains is also okay. Uh, depends on what uh, what environment you are more familiar with. Okay, so in the course in the lectures I, I will be using Visual Studio Code VS Code uh, because it's, it's a, it has a very nice integration with the uh, Linux virtual machine in Windows, and so that's why I prefer to use it. But if you also if you prefer uh, WebStorm, uh, it doesn't matter. At the end of the exam, for the purpose of the exam, it doesn't matter because you will be submitting your source code of the project. So um, uh, the, the, the choice of development environment uh, is not important. Okay, uh, is there any other question I missed? Uh, I see Kao Peng is asking if the lab has two points. Yes, you already, we already said that. Uh, every big lab may give you one point extra for the exam. So there are two big labs, one point each, you may have zero, one or two points extra for submitting the big labs, not the, only, not the, not the first regular small labs, but the big ones. Hmm. Um, I see somebody's writing, so I'm waiting for the questions. Is the problem if you have a recent version? Uh, recent, you mean the 15, for example, more recent version? No, it would not be a problem. We are not using very, you know, um, edge uh, features of, of Node.js. We're trying to um, lay on the fundamentals of the language. The first submission of big legs might be done from one single person. Uh, I will give you instruction for them. Uh, I know that GitHub Classroom already has a, a group feature, but I'm not sure how it works yet. Um, we'll figure out. We have still uh, uh, two and five weeks to go before the beginning. We give you instruction how to submit it. For the moment, it's important to, that you identify the group so that when the big lab will start, uh, you will declare which group is working together. Okay. So uh, I need we I think we need some rest hmm, uh, at the moment. So we are uh, ten minutes ahead of the end of, of the class, and it's good because I can uh, uh, give give us some more time to the next hour, which uh, where we will start actually digging into into the first features of the JavaScript language. Um, so I propose uh, uh, to make a break of fifteen minutes. Huh? And so we can start again at uh, uh, sixteen or five. So you have time for a copy or a coffee or tea or a cup of water or whatever you like better at this hour of the day. Okay. So see you later.